One important thing that quantum mechanics does is it basically incorporates the wave particle duality of nature. That is, it allows us to describe particles as waves. But how exactly do we describe a wave? What properties and quantities do we use to describe the way that a wave behaves and acts? For electromagnetic waves, we saw that we can use things like frequency of oscillation, the wavelength of that electromagnetic wave, as well as the amplitude, also known as displacement. So for an electromagnetic wave, we saw that the frequency of oscillation of any electromagnetic wave is basically a measure of the quantity of energy that a single photon has within that wave. And we also saw that the amplitude or displacement of an electromagnetic wave is related to the strength of the electric and magnetic field and is also related to the intensity or brightness of that electromagnetic wave. So basically, for electromagnetic waves, as the one shown below, we were able to relate the frequency of the wave to the energy of the photon, and we were also able to relate the amplitude of the wave to the measure of the strength of the electric or magnetic field, or to the intensity or brightness of our wave. So basically, if we have the following oscillating uh, electric and magnetic field, so basically this is our electromagnetic wave that consists of oscillating electric fields and oscillating magnetic fields, the amplitude represents our strength of electric field. So because the intensity of an electromagnetic wave is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude and the amplitude is the electric field, then that means means our intensity is directly proportional to the square of our strength of the electric field. Now, what this basically means is the following. This means that in order to actually describe material particles such as electrons as waves, we must be able to use these same physical quantities such as frequency, wavelength, and amplitude. Now, Louis de Broglie was able to basically relate the momentum of a particle such as an electron to the wavelength or frequency that that particular particle produces and the equation is given by this formula. So if we take H, Planck's constant, and divide that by the momentum of our particles, such as an electron, that gives us the wavelength that is produced by that particle, the wave that is produced by that particle. Now, because the wavelength is equal to C, the speed of light in a vacuum, divided by F, the frequency of oscillation of the wave, we can take this equation and we write it in terms of our F, C, H, and P. So basically, we build a relationship between the frequency of the particle wave, the wave produced by the particle, and the particle's momentum. So this is analogous to basically relating the energy of a photon to the frequency or wavelength of that electromagnetic wave. Now, the question still remains. We were able to build a relationship between momentum and frequency or wavelength, but what exactly describes the amplitude or displacement of a particle wave? So we saw in the case of electromagnetic waves, the displacement describes the electric and magnetic fields. But in quantum mechanics, it is a quantity known as the wave function that basically describes the amplitude or displacement of our particle wave. And this is given by the Greek letter psi. So, this wave function given by psi basically describes the height of our displacement, which in turn describes the strength of the field that is produced by that particle wave. And this field is commonly known as matter field. So, psi, our wave function, is basically a function of two variables, as we'll see in a future lecture. It's a function of the position as well as 
of time. Now, we basically define matter wave to represent the wave that is produced by a particle. So, instead of calling it a particle wave, from now on we're going to call it a matter wave. And a matter wave consists of matter fields. So once again, the wave produced by particles, such as electrons, is commonly known as matter waves. And our wave function basically describes the strength of the matter fields of these matter waves. Now, how exactly does one go about interpreting and understanding what exactly a matter wave is? So, let's begin by recalling electromagnetic waves once again. So, if we're taking the point of view of a wave, then we know for the electromagnetic wave, our intensity of the wave is directly proportional to the square of the strength of our electric field. On the other hand, what if we take the point of view of a photon, of a particle? So, if we take the view of a particle, the intensity of the electromagnetic wave is directly proportional to the number of photons that are incident to some surface area. So basically, the intensity of our electromagnetic wave, if we are looking at it from the point of view of photons, is directly proportional to the number of particles that are incident, the number of photons. And because I is proportional to E squared, these two equations combine form equation 1. So n, the number of incident photons, is directly proportional to the square of the electric field. So basically, the greater the number of photons that are striking some surface area, the stronger the beam of light and the brighter that beam of light is. Now, what if we take a single photon? How exactly do we understand this equation for a single photon? So, if we take a single photon, this equation can be interpreted in a slightly different way. For a single photon, this E squared term is basically a measure of the probability of a photon being found in that particular position. So, the greater the E squared term is, the greater the probability is that our single photon is found in that particular location. And the smaller the E squared term is, the less likely is our photon is found in that particular position. So, in a very analogous way, matter waves can be interpreted in a similar way as described in this section. So basically, if we take equation 1, what equation 1 tells us about matter waves is the number of particles found in a matter wave determines the strength of the matter field. So basically, the wave function, which basically tells us the strength of our matter field, also tells us how many particles we have inside that matter wave. So once again, what the wave function actually tells us is the displacement of our matter wave. It tells the strength of our matter field in the same way that our displacement for electromagnetic waves tells us the strength of our electric field for electromagnetic waves. Now, if we take the wave function and we square that wave function, we get something known as the probability density. So, if we're looking at a single particle, such as an electron, then the probability density for that single particle at any given point in space and time tells us the probability of finding an electron at that particular moment in time and point in space. So if our probability density is high, then there is a high probability in finding our electron in that particular region in space and point in time. So once again, the wave function of our particle basically tells us the magnitude of displacement or the magnitude of the matter field of our matter wave produced by that particle. And if we square that wave 
wave function that gives us the probability density, which basically gives us a mathematical probability of finding an electron in a certain given region and certain point in time.